everyone. My name is uh, Sharon Ekiman, and these are my colleagues. So we have, on my right, we have Vicky Bo and Drew San Vicente. And on my left, we have uh, Craig Lewis and Peter Tassman. We are Team Black Mesa Industries, and we are, we are one of the four walking robot teams that uh, take part in the robot competition this semester. So, as I mentioned earlier, our senior design project this semester is to uh, build a robot that will take part in a walking robot competition hosted by SAE. Basically, basically the competition is made up of two runs. The first run being that it will traverse an obstacle course that is modeled after the grid that you see behind me. It will start on the lower left square and it will make its way to the upper right square, avoiding, avoiding walls. The second run is the same as the first run, but there will be a set of stairs <coughs> inserted somewhere along the course. And as you can see in the next slide, there are pictures of, on the left picture, the left side of the slide, there is a picture of what the obstacle course could look like, and on the right is a picture of what the stairs will look like. Of course, there are some constraints on the competition. Our robot has to fit within a seven inch cube, and it has to operate untethered, so obviously the robot, our robot has to come with its own power supply, and our budget does not exceed $300. During the beginning of the semester, we pondered how, how will we build this robot. At the end, we decided to take on the challenge of building our own chassis, despite the fact that none of us are mechanical engineers. And <clears throat> Eventually, we came up with this model right here, which we, we all like. And once, and we used, we used SolidWorks to develop the chassis. Once we finished developing the robot using SolidWorks, we gave the SolidWorks files to Michael Lester, a mechanical engineer here at SDSU. And once he printed out the parts, the parts for the robot, uh, we had to, uh, we had to develop the PCB as well, as well as assemble the other parts of the robot, such as the microcontroller, the servos, and the sensors. And once that was all assembled, here is how our robot looks like in the end, with the specs on the left. And now my colleague, Drew, will be talking about the hardware components of the robot. Okay, so we decided to use an Arduino board, uh, the advice of our lead software designer. And uh, we also said to use for the eyes of our robot the sharp higher sensor, so an infrared sensor, which we found to work quite well. We have more than one, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, we also used a voltage regulator and our battery, which we got two lithium and polymer batteries um, so that we could um, power the robot. We have two, even though we're only using one, just in case the uh, run short during one of the runs. We have the second one already charged up and ready to go. We also decided to use uh, servo motors instead of uh, stepper motors because that was strong enough to support the weight of our robot to get strong steps. Also, the robot, as mentioned before, was fabricated and it was made out of a uh, synthetic material akin to plastic, which is, we found that it's able to support the robot quite nicely and um, it works well. And now we'll move on to uh, Vicky Bo who's our electronics hardware lead, and she'll talk about hardware components. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so I would like to show you the, our hardware design of the robot system via block diagram. We use uh, one battery to power the whole system, and uh, we also need a voltage regulator to get the required power for servos. Um, as you can see, uh, we use four infrared sensors to detect the obstacle. We place two sensors in front of the robot and the other two on the right and the left side of the robot. The sensor will transmit the IR signal to the, uh, optic, to the obstacle and when they hit the obstacle, uh, the sensor will reflect to the IR receiver. The microcontroller uh, uses an analog converter, analog digital converter to interface with the sensors. Moving on to the servos, uh, we use the 12 servo uh, and four at the four servo at the hip and eight servo at the knees. Um, 
V servo will be controlled by the VWM, uh, which is sent from microcontroller. And uh, basically, the VWM signal will control the angle of the servo. And uh, so it can uh, have the robot uh, walk straight forward, uh, walk side, sideways, uh, turn left and right. Uh, we also use the accelerometer and magnetometer to the, uh, keep the robot balanced and it interface with Aruno uh, via the SCL and uh, SDA. Uh, for power supply, uh, a battery lithium polymer 7.4 volt and uh, its capacity is 1300 mAh um, to power the system. Um, the Aruno, uh, we use a connect to the battery uh, through the on-off switch and the voltage regulator inside the Aruno will give the 5 volt output to the uh, sensor, to IR sensor and 3.3 volt output to the accelerometer. Um, Trail cell that we use uh, is operated as 4.8 volt to uh, 6 volt but it's need more current draw so we have to use the step down voltage regulator uh, which is give the output 5 volt and 3 amp this is enough uh, current to power on the servos and next we have the class we can talk about the sensor and the servos well, uh, so in order to achieve uh, walking across the obstacle course, we must uh, be aware of our surrounding and spatial awareness, so that way we don't end up driving our robot straight into a wall or into the stairs. So for our spatial awareness, we were using four IR sensors. The first two we have here, they're uh, close range IR sensors with a range from 2 to 15 centimeters. These ones are going to be fronted on the, uh, the front of the robot. They're going to be primarily used, so once again, to not drive the, the robot straight into a wall. And these ones also play a special role in the stair detection. Uh, next, we'll have the longer range sensors. These ones operate from 10 to uh, 80 centimeters. And these ones are going to be, there's going to be one mounted on each side of the robot, so that way when we're translating to the left and to the right, or crab walking to the left and to the right, <coughs> we don't drive the robot into the wall of barriers on the sides of the grid. Here is, you'll, you'll see the sensors in use. Uh, to the right, we have the sensors on the sides of the robot. These ones are going to be uh, the longer range so we don't get too close to the walls on the, uh, to the right and to the left of the robot. And to the front, we're going to have two uh, sensors mounted on top of each other. And when these two sensors read different values, that's how, how uh, we're going to be able to determine when there's stairs in front of us and not a, uh, a wall. So that way we can uh, begin the stair climbing algorithm to climb over the stairs. And the stairs that you can see are five centimeters, the top, the top stair is five centimeters apart from the bottom stair, so when we're reading the different voltage values from the IR sensors, that's how we're going to be able to determine that we're uh, facing stairs and not a wall. Uh, we are using 12 servos in order to create movement in the robot. These 12 servos have three uh, degrees of uh, movement. Uh, one servo in each leg is going to be operating as a shoulder, it's going to be able to provide a horizontal movement. And that's going to be the primary way of uh, creating forward movement as it's going to move a leg, swing a leg forward and kind of skitter forward. And there's going to be a, a, a servo on each leg that serves as a knee to lift the leg up and down. So that way we're not dragging the leg on the floor. And finally, one more servo that serves kind of as an ankle. That'll adjust the uh, final foot or the very end leg of the robot so that way it can reach out further if necessary. And these servos do operate on a pulse of modular that can react almost instantaneously to adjust the angling of the servos. We are also be using a accelerometer and a magnetometer combo to uh, give us even more information to, uh, to traverse the course. These ones specifically play an important role in the stair climbing for the accelerometer. Uh, we can adjust the knees of the robot to keep the robot balanced when climbing over the stairs. And the magnetometer uh, is going to be used to keep the robot walking straight as we determine walking straight is harder than we uh, originally imagined. So when we have the magnetometer to determine which direction or the directionality of the robot, we can adjust accordingly. When the robot begins to drift off course, we can readjust the uh, robot to walk forward. Next, we have uh, Peter Tassin that will talk about the modes of movement. Our robot has uh typical uh, range of movement, translating, being able to translate in every direction, and is also able to <coughs> rotate. 
we also have uh, a stair type of movement. This is because our robot is a little uh, bigger than the stairs or wider, I should say. So usually it has to uh, um, kind of prop up and make itself taller so that it can walk over the stairs. That way it doesn't tip over. And moving on. Here we have some very high level uh, flow diagrams of the algorithm. At the top left there you can see that, that is run after the setup of the hardware. Uh, you can see that we're looking for a command there. So basically by command I mean uh, a movement. If currently there's a movement running, then we continue uh, moving through that state machine for that movement. Otherwise we're going to go ahead and go into uh, the sensor readings. So we want to read our accelerometer and magnetometer. We also want to check the, uh, the IR sensors to see if you look around the walls and such. And of course, once we uh, you know, go through all the data, then we figure out which way we want to head, what kind of movement we want to use, and we set that as our next uh, movement command. On the right here, I'm going to go in a little more detail. So once we Let's say we read the IR sensor values. We want to be looking forward for a front wall. If there's no front wall, then obviously we're going to keep walking forward. However, if there is a there, if there is a wall, then we want to strap left or right uh, so that we can find an opening. And this is done by our side sensors, as mentioned previously. Uh, in terms of walking forward in a straight line, we use our magnetometer. Uh, essentially, when we first start with the uh, the, sorry, uh, sorry, the robot, we get the direction pointing to your north, and then based off of that, as we're moving around, we obviously get new readings for the uh, the vector towards north, and we have to do some math there to figure out the angle between so that we can rotate uh, such that the robot goes in a straight line. And Next up, we're going to have uh, Drew talk to us about the <coughs> Oh, sorry. First, we have video.
and of course Dr. Lee and Michael Lesson, even though he's not here, we developed the robot chess and threads, which was a dream for him. And we also like to thank the entire electrical, electrical and computer engineering department for giving us the skills we needed to uh, to uh, take to take this project on. And we hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you.